Thank you for joining us for the PICS University presents How to Enhance Audits in Three Simple Steps. My name is Catherine Gutierrez and I will be your host for this webinar. Our presenter will be Jesse Coda, and Jesse will be talking to us a little bit about how you can enhance your audits. Jesse comes to us as a major contributor for the development and maintenance of PICS World Class Supply Chain Management System. He currently oversees contractors and vendors for Fortune 500 companies. His daily responsibilities have him overseeing PICS operations and customer service and safety auditing. And Jesse has been with PICS since 2005. What we'll do now is I'll share with you how you can ask a question. To ask a question, simply open the chat panel. In the Send To drop-down list, you'll select the host. Enter your message into the text box, and then follow this step. If you're in Windows, you'll click Send, and if you're using a Mac, then you'll click Enter. Questions will be answered at the end of the webinar, and I will now turn the time over to Jesse to go through how to enhance audits in three steps. Thank you, Catherine. Again, good morning, everybody. Um, just like Catherine says, you know, one of the things we're doing today is, is the ability to take our audits to the next level. We all have our health and safety audits or any audits that you might do depending on the industry that you're in. Kind of piggybacking on what Catherine had mentioned, uh, my organization is a safety auditing company. We've been in business for over 10 years, and in, during that time frame, we've done thousands of audits. And we've been able to enhance our audits by just incorporating simple steps that have helped us um, make it more meaningful for the auditee and, or contractor in, in my, our industry to allow them to understand why we're doing something and how that benefits them. So as we see here, you know, the audit, what the simple definition of an audit is a systematic review of operations and practices to ensure that re relevant requirements are met. And, and that's the bottom line. The goal is not to find something and just say, hey, you, you're missing something, you're deficient in, 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 in this, and, and do not pass a goal. The goal is to identify areas where we can improve. So again, in my line of business, anybody who comes to work goes home in the same manner that they came, came to work. So again, in safety evaluation, what we do is we evaluate all aspects of a safety management system. That includes policies and procedures, ensuring that, that the programs are in place to, so that the benchmark is set and where and how to do different things. Then the implementation of that, those policies and procedures, the training, making sure that the individual is getting that training. And then finally um, is kind of what we call a field audit or, or a review of competency of the employee. Did that training actually sink in? Did the, did the goal, was the goal met? Were those, are those individuals doing what we're hoping they are doing based on their policies and procedure? In the end, you know, we use the word audit quite a bit, but in, in my work line, um, line of work, we try to use the term review, because that's what we're doing. We're reviewing policies, we're reviewing protocols, and then we're trying to enhance them. So what is the primary objective of an audit? You know, bottom line is, is what we see here is should be common to everybody on this call is we want to verify, identify, and close. Verify that the work activity complies with the applicable protocols and, and regulations. We're ensuring that the procedures they have fulfill the minimum requirements. Identify gaps. That's the core of what an audit is, is we're looking for ways to improve. What can be done better? What can we teach? Uh, that individual, that contractor that we're working with. Uh, for example, you know, a contractor can, can really believe that their confined space program is, is, is perfect, but when we find out that it's missing something regarding fire extinguishers, well, that's an important part of a confined space program, we allow them to, you know, we teach them and we allow them to understand why that's important, and, 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 and if we need to, show them where it comes from. And then obviously close any gaps that we find, any requirements that we find. Every audit should have some sort of closure, should have some way to um, in, increase the, the ability for the contractor to, for their programs to succeed, like a corrective action program. Finally, the takeaway of an audit. It's, it's to foster, or to, the audit should be performed in a matter that will foster positively and encouragement. This will eliminate negative perceptions. What that means is the us versus them mentality. The I know more than you do. Now, as an auditor, we want to make sure we're competent and, we're, and, and are able to understand what's going on. But we don't have to treat our auditees or our contractors that way. Because it will allow us to increase the willingness to participate, be more receptive. They understand that we're there to help out. Allow for open communication, which we'll talk a little bit more in a bit. 
and shift the focus towards continuation of improvement and positive change in management. Overall, overall we're trying to reduce ineffectiveness and increase productivity. You know, and how can we do that? So we just briefly discuss kind of what an audit should be. You know, we're looking for certain information, we're trying to digest it, we're trying to evaluate it, and then we're trying to produce end results. And what we've done in our company, we've actually, over the years, have put together these three simple steps that I feel not only can help us, but definitely can help any organization that would um, implement them. Our philosophy is pretty simple. We call it the CAP system. It's communicate the objective, address opportunities to improve, and provide guidance to succeed. So what does that mean? Pretty, pretty simply, it means it's just work with the person or contractor that you're auditing. The bottom line is we want to communicate what the objectives are. This isn't a, 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 a test that where we're trying to just trick someone and look at something that they're not ready for. So again, I've been in business or in safety for about 10 years and have conducted hundreds of audits and these three simple steps have allowed me to conduct more meaningful audits, meaning more buy-in. And, um, and that's the bottom line. At least that's our philosophy in, 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 in my organization. It's an opportunity to teach. Um, the, the ability to communicate the objective allows us to give that, that opportunity to the auditee or the contractor a way to prepare and fully understand it. And how do we do that? We'll get into the three steps a little bit more is communicate the objective. Should not be a surprised audit. Fully disclose the disclosure of questions and expectations. I truly believe, again, this is an arena where we're talking about maybe a pre-qualification or a requalification. Audits that, we're current, that we do on a consistent basis, whether it be yearly, every two, three years. There are certain situations when an audit needs to be some sort of a surprise. Maybe it's a part of an investigation. So those are different types of of, of uh, areas to audit. In this case, like I said, we're, 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 we're trying to ensure that the folks working for us are meeting some minimum standards that they should be meeting. So these steps, like I said, communicate the objective. Shouldn't be a surprise. You know, part of the prequalification of a contractor and subsequent requalification is that these guys, these contractors have these programs that will continuously live. It's like a living document. We want to understand, make sure that they understand what type of audit this is. Is it just the policies and procedures? Do I just need to bring my programs in to look at? Or is it all the way down to what we call the field audit, a visual inspection, a competency? Did the employee actually understand what they're doing? Don't blindside them with unexpected requirements. Again, it is to prepare them, and in turn, it buys the auditor of the company, because this is probably not the only audit we're going to do, it buys us time back, it buys us quality back. You know, that's what we're looking for, is the quality of this audit. A continuation of communicate the objective. Put the auditee or the contractor at ease. The term sometimes, the term audit sometimes is kind of a negative connotation. Like I mentioned earlier, we, we actually use the word review a lot more than the word audit because in our, in our minds, that's what we're trying to do. You know, openly present the requirements prior to and during the audit. Um, in my line of work, sometimes what I do is I tell the, the, the contractor that I'm auditing, hey, I understand, you know, you went into business to be a welder, a great welder. That's why you're hired to work at this particular client. Now, it's expected to have health and safety procedures, but I understand you're not the expert at that, and you're, even though you're trying your best, the chances are there might be some gaps, and that's what I'm here for, is to find, try to identify those gaps and help you close them out. Um, a post-audit assistance and guidance. Access to the follow-up with questions and concerns. Offer guidance. Don't leave them hanging, as, as we say here, is basically, you know, provide them that avenue to succeed. And then, again, bottom line is, is benchmark what the minimum requirements are. There are certain times when the audit's going to be really regulatory-based. You know, we're going through based on OSHA standards or EPA or whatever, you know, uh, industry you're in. Or it could be more client-based because it's such a heavily regulated uh, industry that there are certain client restrictions or, or requirements that a contractor must meet. Make sure they understand that because, in the end, sometimes they might have to make amendments to their own normal processes to uh, fulfill your requirements. Address the opportunity to improve. That's the biggest thing. We've, we've now communicated to them 
what we're looking for, what the audit's going to be. So we'll assume that now they are prepared. They understand that it, we're there to work as a team. They understand we're there to help. So now let's help them. You know, let's address those opportunities to improve. Chances are, for the most part, every audit we conduct will have some sort of gap. Now, one thing here is a little kind of a uh, philosophical um, uh, idea we have here is we believe that any audit should be 100% verification rather than a great score. You know, a good 80% score, you know, but what happens to that 20% failure? What if that 20% or that, that, that uh, lower score is something to do with inert entry for confined space? Because someone got a 90 or 95%, is that not still as, as important? I always use sometimes the, uh, the uh, explanation or the example of respiratory protection versus housekeeping. On the surface, all of us probably will say that respiratory protection is more important. And you know what? It, it is to a certain extent. But without, any, um, uh, without addressing housekeeping, we can still incur uh, injuries. And so that's why we say here is we got to give them the same importance. You know, we assess the gaps, communicate ways to close these gaps, maybe provide some detailed explanation, you know, what the deficiency is, clear instructions and suggestions. All requirements, again, have to have some sort of way to close them out and give them the same importance. And finally, the P part of the CAP uh, acronym that we use is provide guidance to succeed. Fit the, you know, make sure that the audit that you're doing fits what that contractor or that individual is doing. All of us have an audit protocol, and, and, and in our case, our audit protocol is pretty extensive. And so therefore, as part of our communication process, we try to understand what that contractor does. You know, is are they a maintenance company? Do they do crane operations? Are they more um, consulting type? That, that varies what type of requirements or what type of things we're going to look for. I'm not going to go to a company that does maintenance but never touches a crane and start trying to audit them on some sort of crane process. What that does, it, it diminishes the value of the audit. You know, recap the audit with the person or the contractor to make sure they understand. Make sure they understand why this was a deficiency, why we need to update it, and then obviously the big thing is how they can close it out. We're not going to do it for them. That's not our responsibility as auditors is to go and close it out. But I do believe uh, as auditors the responsibility should be is to provide them that avenue, how to do it. In our case, we have um, sample programs, health and safety programs. They're samples. They're pretty detailed. They're going to give them give you the opportunity to understand what that program is about, but you still have to build it based on your own procedures. But we've given them an, an avenue to succeed. Um, you know, ensure, again, ensure that that customization, ensure that this audit is meaningful. That's what we're trying to look for, is to make sure that when the contractor leaves this audit, they understand how the information we just found is going to make them better. And that's what we're looking for. So a quick little business application. I, uh, it's been a, a quick presentation because I want to just get drive to the point, the three simple steps that we use as an, audit, as an auditing company to make us more efficient, the CAP process. And so in a business application here, what I have here is just, this is actually taken a little bit from um, uh, an encounter I had a, a long time ago. We had a client uh, that, uh, that did business with us. Very good company, but very, you know, very taxed in, in responsibilities and in trying to conduct multiple jobs. And one of them was to do uh, audits on their own. So what they did is uh, they had an ABC company, type of a maintenance company, working there. And they were told, they had told that company that they would have an audit like on a Wednesday. That was about it, a safety audit. So they didn't provide any type of um, instructions as to what they were going to be looking for. So the company, you know, moving on about business, just prepared based on what they had there. So when the auditor arrived and started doing the, the audit, the only thing that that company had at the site was basically their, their policies and procedures, which was a protocol of theirs to have in each of their trucks, which is a good thing. They, they could refer back to them. But unfortunately, they weren't aware of the true objective of that audit, which was the training of the personnel working there. This unfortunately created some confusion and delayed work. Um, 
what happened is the foreman, the, the superintendent there, and trying to close the audit out because he knows that a, a quote-unquote bad audit doesn't look good on, on his crew, um, stopped work in certain areas and had guys going back to the home office or trying to get on the phone and trying to fax over or email over information so that they can show the auditor that they actually did have most of that training. Now, because of result of the numerous deficiencies, there, again, there was a delay in the work. And then finally, after a certain amount of time, you know, we, they finally got down to the actual identifiable gaps. But unfortunately, no, no uh, guidance was provided there. And this led to a uh, delay in closing out their audit. In a sense, I think it was, it was open for a year. So bottom line is there was no good takeaway from this other than, hey, this is a, 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 an audit, a, a pain ex exercise, as, as some folks would call it, and all we need to do is get through it. The contractor didn't, didn't learn anything that would help them get better, and instead were just a little bit perturbed and, and, and again, uh, not too happy to work there. Now, when we came in, next time we audited them, it was a, a, a whole different story. Why? Because we followed our steps. That's what we do. We followed the, the, the simple steps of CAP. We communicated the objectives. We were able to get the correct information. As a matter of fact, we cut the time in half of what the audit would have, what was before, and we were able to address, and these contractors were, had, this contractor has implemented those into their work process. So that's kind of what I believe the, our acronym, our, our three steps will definitely help out. A little bit about ourselves here, you know, we've been talking a lot about, you know, this, this way to enhance audits, and, and this is just a quick snapshot. I, again, our organization is, is, um, is, an, is a leading expert in, in health and safety audits, and so one of our audits that we have is what's called the Safety Manual Audit. It's a thorough review of the contractor's safety manual and training program. It's performed by a, a safety professional. We don't do any self-performed uh, audits in our industry, or excuse me, in our organization. Um, like I, I've told people before, I don't think I've ever failed a self-performed audit. So therefore, our auditors or our safety professionals will go, they understand, they're the competent uh, experts in, in, their, in their areas, but we communicate. We actually have protocols. We will call the contractor. We will communicate with them and talk to them first about scope of work, exposures, what they do, what they don't do, where they're working at. And that 10 to 15 minute call basically sets the tone for what the audit's gonna incur. Now we, bought, we, we have buy-in from the contractor, they thoroughly understand what we're going to do, and we've taken into account really what they do. And so they're not, they know that they're not going to be audited on areas where they're not responsible for. When we ensure, once we do our audits, we ensure that all the uh, applicable gaps that we find, all deficiencies or requirements, about, we provide them with an avenue of closure, whether it's a sample program, whether it's maybe some websites that we know are very good, or any factors like that to give these folks, to give these contractors the ability to close them out and hopefully sustain and not just close it out for the audit, but implement it into their protocol and procedures. And then they always have the ability to communicate with us. I know sometimes that is very difficult to do depending on, on your circumstances, but given the, give them a, an avenue to communicate, whether it's email or, or just a simple call. It does wonders to close out the process, and we give due dates. You know, depending on the type of audit, it could be whether a couple weeks, you know, sometimes implementing policies and procedures take a while. We, it shouldn't happen overnight. So we could give them 30 days, 60 days, whatever the audit that we're doing uh, calls for. So this is kind of how we do our audits, and we've been very effective in not only conducting them, but ensuring that these contractors have implemented into their processes and, and, and protocols as we do follow-on audits on, on, on intervals, whether it's a yearly audit or every three years. So in summary, kind of go over, we've discussed that an audit is a tool to use to identify strengths and weaknesses. We use open communication like, you know, we want to schedule, prepare, be aware of what, uh, of what will be audited, the knowledge of the requirements, access to the data. We want to make sure we have access to it. That's a key point I, I forgot a little bit is, is, is sometimes the contractor needs time to, uh, to have access to the data that we're looking for. And in communicating, that gives them that opportunity to do that. Communicate the expectations right up front. What is the desired result? Why are we doing this? Identify and resolve any issues associated with deficiencies. 
Is this a gap analysis or a straight checklist? Depends on the type of audit. You know, are we verifying regulatory legis uh, legislative requirements? Ensure the company knows how and where to improve. The bottom line again is, are we going to be cop or are we going to be a doc doctor? You know, uh, is a, are we there to try to ticket or find somebody, or are we there to help them fix it? And so that's kind of the mentality. We we try to be more of the doctor, the doc part of this, in aiding to improve rather than identifying just the negatives. And don't find fault or or, or accuse. Help improve existing and future needs. You know, one of the things we do, we build long-lasting relationships as an auditing company that the contractors that we've audited understand that during their process, in between their normal audit intervals, they can call us and say, hey, we're about to get into this new uh, area, this new type of scope of work. Can you help us? Because they understand why the importance is the importance of having proper uh, procedures. And then finally, enhancing opportunities for improving versus inhibiting improvement opportunities. We're there to help. We're there to make sure that we improve because in the end, it, it, it takes care of not only the contractor, but the client, and then bottom line, it takes care of that human being, which has always been the result of what health and safety is all about. So in conclusion, you know, I'll uh, leverage some best practices and, you know, don't reinvent the wheel. These policies and procedures, you know, these types of audits are there. This type of, this is what this webinar was here to enhance. It's not go and create a new new audit protocol, but maybe implement these type of, uh, this acronym CAP that would help you. There's a lot of good, there's a lot of good information on successful programs. Um, yeah, providing information on programs, you know, it, it, it gives the contractor the ability to understand why we're doing certain things. One of the things too, it depends on, on your nature of business and sometimes it's very difficult to uh, conduct all these audits because you're wearing multiple hats. Join an industry a consortium where supplier data is, is shared. One of the things we do is, you know, we talked a lot about quality of the audit and why, but also the quantity. You know, it, this type of procedure buys back time. And in joining a consortium, it would definitely help out organizations as the data is readily available sooner than later. And again, over, over, over 10 years, PIX has consulted with and provided supplier management solutions for the most respected companies in the world. We have worked, um, we're, global, we're a global company, we work in, in many countries, and we have great safety professionals that we're constantly improving our protocols and procedures to ensure that the bottom line is that when we do a health and safety audit, uh, we're making it meaningful for not only the contractor, but the client. This is a quick snapshot of some of the clients that work with us. Our offices around the world, we, like I mentioned earlier, we are located in just about every continent. And again, bottom line, this is we, kind of a tying back to the premise of the, of the presentation, is I believe that if you incorporate these three simple steps, communicate the objective, address opportunities to improve, provide guidance to succeed, will definitely enhance your audit protocols. I thank you very much for your oppor the opportunity to speak with you all today, and thank you for your time. I'll pass it back to Catherine. Thank you, Jesse. That was an excellent presentation. We appreciate your time and your experience in the auditing world. Uh, for those of you who may have additional questions or would like to learn a little bit more about PIX auditing, uh, what we do as a company, how we do that supply chain management, what our audit protocols are like or would like to speak a little bit more to a safety professional to get expertise, simply send an email to any of, or a reply to any of the emails that you've received, or you can send me an email directly and I can facilitate that for you. My email address is C Gutierrez, which is G-U-T-I-E-R-R-E-Z at PIX, P-I-C-S, auditing.com, and be happy to take care of that for you. Again, we thank you for uh, joining us today. Our next webinar presentation will be held in July, so keep an eye out on your email for that, and we hope you have a wonderful week. Take care.